All right, another video here for Unit 1, exploring one variable data. This video is going to focus on topic 1.4, representing a categorical variable with graphs. All right, so let's dive right into it. We've already learned an awful lot about categorical variables. Now we just got to talk about how to make a graph of it. So the first type of graph that you could use for a categorical variable is a bar chart, also known as a bar graph. Bar charts can be used to display frequencies, which are counts, or relative frequencies, which are proportions, for a categorical variable only. You would never, ever use a bar chart if you're dealing with quantitative data. All right, so just taking data from a frequency table or relative frequency table and making bars. It's really that simple. It's not difficult at all. So earlier we saw this exact same frequency table that shows the counts of different ethnicities taken from a sample of 260 people. Or a bar graph is just turning those into bars. So here we have our ethnicities on the x-axis in no particular order whatsoever. They don't have to go in any order you want. You will see typically people put the highest one on the left, down to the lowest on the right. doesn't have to be that way at all. And then on the left side, our y-axis is the frequency or the counts. So you'll see that the white ethnicity had more counts than any other, and you'll see that Hispanic had counts. Now, this is a beautiful chart. What is one, and really in my mind, only one negative to a bar graph, is that if this is all you have, like you don't actually know the frequency table, all you have is the graph in front of you, you don't know exactly how many people were, for example, Hispanic. Like it looks like it's definitely between 0 and 50. You know it's smaller. It looks like it's lower than half, so it's less than 25. But is it 18, 19, 20, 15? I mean, it's really kind of hard to tell. Now, you can make your y-axis um, intervals a little bit more defined, like maybe go by fives or by tens. That could obviously help in locating what those values are. But in a graph like it is right now, it's really kind of hard to see. So that is one negative, but it, the, the, the positive is that it's just really meant for a quick display, right? Like you could quickly tell, wow, there's more whites. There's, there's almost triple the whites as Asians and so forth. So it allows you to see some simple things like that, and all you got to do is open your eyes and look. A couple comments is that we do need to make sure that all of the bars are of equal width. You never want, you want the height of the bars to be what sets them apart, not the widths. Um, also, you notice there's these gaps in between. Those gaps should always be nice and equal as well, and you definitely want those gaps to be there, so that way it's a little bit easier to see. All right. Up next, we have what we call a relative frequency table. We've also discussed this before. This is nothing more than taking the counts divided by the total, which was 260. And that gave us our proportions or percentages, the exact same thing. We could do the exact same thing. So instead of looking at these numbers, we could turn these numbers into bars. So now you'll notice on the x-axis, we have the exact same categories or bins. And on the y-axis, instead of having the counts or the frequency, we now have the proportion, right? So we have anywhere from 0.0, .0 to 0.6. Now, you, you know, our highest proportion was white at 50%, 50.77%. So there's no need to go anywhere above 60. So I went to 60. You don't have to go all the way 100, right? Because there's no data that goes that high. So there's no point in going that high. So this is the exact same thing we saw. And I'm going to quickly go back to the frequency uh, bar graph and then the relative frequency bar graph, and you'll notice that they pretty much convey the same information. The only difference is, does it, confer, does it show the proportion, or does it show how many? So that's really the only difference. But you'll notice a lot of it is very similar in terms of, you know, we want the heights to be the differentiating factor, not the widths. And you'll notice these gaps between the different bars and so forth. The uh, third way that you could display categorical data is with a pie chart. Hopefully most of you are familiar with this. Pie charts are very good ways, but keep in mind, they can only show relative, which is just a fancy word for proportions. Par char par <laughs> pie charts cannot show counts. They have to show percentages or proportions. So here is exactly that. And again, it's colorful. It's easy to see. Oh my gosh, there's you know, African Americans and whites are the two much, much larger. All the others are much smaller. So it's very easy to see that in a pie chart. Very nice to see. So of the 260 people, you see the breakdown percentage-wise, proportion-wise for each ethnicity. Um, it's just another way to visually show 
the categorical variable and it kind of looks nice and pretty, right? Pretty simple there. All right, now we also need to be able to compare two data sets of the same variable. So we want to be able to use a frequency table and bar graphs to allow us to compare these two sets of data, right? So I'm not talking about two different variables, I'm talking about the same variable measured from two different groups. So let's look at ethnicities from school A and a new set from school B. So now here on the left, we have a bar graph from the same ethnicities from school A compared to the ethnicities from school B. So it's the same variable, ethnicity. Now we're just comparing two different data sets. One data set came from school A, one data set came from school B. Now, it's important to understand that I know school A, I already showed you the data, so we know there's 260 kids in school A that are a sample of 260 kids from school A. But if I look over on the red school B, I really have no idea how many kids were there total. I guess I could estimate it. You know, it looks like there was maybe 410. Again, that's a drawback of one of these charts. I don't know exactly how many uh, whites were there. But um, because I have these side-by-side -side bar graphs, it does make it very easy to compare, right? So what can I say in comparison here, right? Well, you could say school A has more whites than any other uh, ethnicity, while school B has more African-Americans than any other ethnicity. You could comment that school B has a larger Asian population than school um, A. Um, so that's kind of the cool thing that you could do there, and you could kind of compare. You could also talk about similarities. They both have very few Pacific Islanders and Native Americans. Um, and here is the exact same data, just turned into relative. So notice on the left-hand side here, our y-axis is the relative proportions. Now, um, the question I have here is why would it be better to compare proportions than percentages? And the easy answer to that is because of sample size. When you have uneven or unknown sample sizes, it is much, much better to use proportions to compare than to use, to use counts. For example, if we go back here for counts, I mean, if you have different amounts, right, let's just say, and I'm just kind of making these numbers up, but we know school A was 260. Let's just say school B was 1,000. Well, no wonder if you have a sample of 1,000 people, you're, you're going to have more of any category. You're going to have more whites because there's just more people. You're going to have more Hispanics because there's just more people. So when you're comparing two groups of unequal size, it's actually not fair to just look at counts. And this is a really important thing to keep in mind for this course is that when you have two groups of unequal size, it is so much more fair to compare the proportions because now that's relative to the whole. So it makes it a lot more, or it's a lot more important to say, okay, I see that at school B, there's a larger proportion of African Americans than any other versus school A, there's a larger proportion of um, whites. So um, keep that in mind kind of for the rest of this course. It is important to use proportions, especially when you have unequal sample sizes. It's just fair. It's more fair. I want to talk a lot more about that in class as well. And that's it for lesson 1. or 1.4, topic 1.4. It's really just you know, being able to look at the different ways to display categorical variable and talk about what you see. All right, that's it. See you in the next video.